Hi guys, it's James from Meetster and this is vlog number two. And actually the first vlog hasn't even gone up yet so I've got no idea what uh, anyone's going to think of it or whether it was worth making but I'm hoping anyway that the first three or four I'll just get more and more succinct and uh, hopefully keep your attention. So today the purpose of this vlog is twofold. I'm actually setting up, um, this is late afternoon, I'm setting up to do a steak video early this evening and I thought you might be slightly interested to just see how I set up for those and I'll keep that as short as possible. Um, but you can see how I have to set up camera and lighting and cooking and everything. And then we're gonna do a little chicken test again like we did in the last vlog. And this one today is to figure out if liquid smoke that's right, liquid smoke can create a barbecue piece of chicken in the pan, which in the UK would be incredible because a lot of the year we definitely can't cook outside. So let's get to that, but first you can just watch me set up for my steak video that I'll be filming later. I'll see you back again in a minute. All right, that's the uh, setup for the steak video done, um, pretty much anyway. All that I need to do for that would be to light the barbecue, put all the lights on, set that up properly, make it look all right, and then I can just get on with that and eat some delicious steak. Um, before that, I'll actually film a beer review video, and before that, I'm gonna do the rest of this vlog, which is going to be our chicken test. Now, I'm starving. Been to the gym, I haven't eaten since breakfast, it's about 5 p.m. So, what have I got planned for today? Well, I thought I could do something a bit different today, <clears throat> and as I said, I want to find out if liquid smoke, which by the way, I didn't know existed until really recently, but apparently is used quite a lot in all sorts of products that have a smoky flavor from, like, I don't know, flavors of crisps, maybe smoky bacon to, cheaper smoked cheeses and smoked sausages. They just put some of this. Now this is a natural hickory wood smoke and essentially they've got, they've condensed the smoke that comes off of it and it goes into this liquid. So uh, all I wanna find out is can I cook a chicken inside on the pan with liquid smoke and cook it outside on the barbecue and see if they are at all similar. I'm going to take a guess right now Let's give this a smell. That they might not be. All right. Oh, that smells like a long smoked brisket to me. But with, it's not artificial because it isn't artificial, but it's just odd to have such a concentrated sort of flavor and smell in here. So, uh, hmm. It really does smell like a bag of like bacon crisps. Maybe that's all they put into it. I don't know if you get bacon crisps in the US, but here in the UK, people do like them. I'm not a massive fan myself, but um, here we go. Let's go and light the barbecue. Let's get on with it. All right, I've got the chimney started behind me and uh, in a minute that can go into the barbecue, which is over here. And this is the uh, keg master. No, that's wrong. I never remember the name, that's the Broil King Keg, which uh, I've been enjoying over the past year or so. Uh, I'm yet to do some real long tests with smoking and things, but we're gonna do that later this year. Okay, I'm gonna go in, prepare the chicken, and uh, I'll see you in a minute. The handle's actually come off of this, so it's a bit dodgy. Let's just grab it all together. And here we go. Put this back nice and slow. And this glove, by the way, the one I'm wearing, can take some serious heat. Only the part of my arm that hasn't got anything can actually feel anything there. It's pretty hot down there. 
Seeing as we're gonna need the barbecue all evening, I'm gonna stock it up with coal and then close the lid, get it really hot, and hopefully I'll be back in about 20 minutes. To be honest, it does worry me a bit that I can do this in the end of March. Uh, I've been able to do this since about the middle of February this year, so something is a little bit up with that, don't you think? This shouldn't be possible in the UK. I can only complain so much right now, though. So about once a week I like to open up um, this wine cabinet that I've got here and uh, let me just say I've only got this because I am in the wine trade so I did a lot of wine studying, tasting, drinking um, and so uh, you know a lot of my money has gone into this wine cabinet, my wine collection that's here and, and elsewhere. Um, so I'm not trying to show off, uh, I just this is what my passion has been for many years. Um, uh, I've got quite a nice collection here from, uh, if you're interested, I've got some good Sassicaia here, that's an Italian wine from Tuscany, super Tuscan it would be known as. Um, you know, just, just a collection of stuff, I don't know what you want to see. We've got some Ridge Montebello, that's from uh, California. We've got some Cocked Rotti. This may be of no interest to anyone. This is some single vineyard cot roti. That's from the Northern Rhone, that's a Syrah. Uh, we've got a couple of, okay. We've got a little collection here of uh, a couple of bottles of Oak Brion. But anyway, that's not what I'm gonna be opening. The barbecue should be getting quite hot by now. I'm gonna go out and check that and hopefully we'll be able to cook this up really soon. Oh, I'm still waiting for the barbecue to be hot, so um, I'll just tell you how logistically this is going to work. Um, it can be quite complicated filming these cooking videos, whether I'm doing, you know, an ad hoc basic one like this and talking to you casually, or whether I'm doing a steak one. Um, I have a hob over here, so this is where I can, would conduct the indoor cooking test, and then out of this door at the back, I have the barbecue out there. And then I have, uh, you can see one cat there, and I've got another cat down here. You can see him over there somewhere, and then probably, there's a third one. Oh, look. <laughs> look they're together over here, which is quite cute. The big guy, Roger, over there, is, is massive. He's about a meter long, weighs 12 kilograms. And I've thought strongly about contacting the Guinness Book of Records. I, I know he's not too far off some of the large Maine Coons that have been uh, records before. <laughs> so anyway, as you can see, we don't let our cats out because, um, well, you know, they're pretty dopey. So in order to cook chicken there and chicken there at the same time, I'm gonna have to run in and out so it's going to be a little bit chaotic, but we'll get it done. Um, right, next time you see me, I promise I will just be about to cook. Otherwise, this video is going to go on forever. All right, time is pretty much here. And so I'm going to season the chicken and let you know how I'm going to do this. I've got three pieces of chicken there. One of them is going on the barbecue with just salt. The other ones are going to get some salt. And then one of them is going to get some of this liquid uh, smoke uh, just before cooking. And the other one is going to get it during cooking. Um, now, I don't know what difference it'll make, if any, but I'm gonna put some on the one that gets it first now and leave it for two or three minutes. So we'll see if anything can sort of be infused or if that just burns off. Um, or do you essentially just put it on after you've cooked and we'll find that out. Obviously, if they don't taste of anything, we'll just season it as we eat, all right? Okay, the pan's going on the hob any second now. Uh, let me season these. All right, I'm just heading out with this uh, chicken. For the barbecue, I think it's gonna take an extra few minutes on the barbecue than it will otherwise. Still lovely out here. Oh, this barbecue's got up to, it's about 275 Celsius, so that is, that's 550 Fahrenheit. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that crackling.
Okay, we better go and start inside and get those cooking, otherwise this test is all gonna go wrong. Right, get the pan on. Get some decent heat going here. And like I said, we've got one with the marinade, well, the, the liquid smoke already on there. I mean, what does it actually say on here? I didn't really look. Dash or brush? Dash. I dashed. Maybe I more than dashed. I mean, if you can see this little silly picture here, uh, they're, they're dashing that onto a raw steak. I wouldn't try it on steak before I've tried it on chicken, would I? I mean, what a waste that could be. Right, a bit of seasoning going on. I'm always, I'm quite a wary person with chicken, hence why it's over here by my sink rather than in the middle of the kitchen, but frankly, after I've cooked with chicken, everything gets a proper spray <laughs> with antibacterial. It's just, just the way I am. Okay. I'm gonna get this on and then I'm gonna go and check outside. Okay, the tiny piece that's got the dash on will go in in a minute once I've come back inside. Let's check on this one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's starting, I'm gonna close the lid and head on back. You can see what I mean about having to run in and having to run in and out all the time to do this. Um, I'm gonna give this a little bit of olive oil. Sorry if I keep staring over to one side, that's where the screen is and um, it's gonna take me, I think, a few weeks of doing this in order to start looking just at the lens. It's weird looking at the lens only and you keep wanting to check your framing, so uh, sorry about that. But you can see we're cooking over there in the background. Let's, oh, as I said, I'm gonna dash with this one as I cook. So here we go. It might just all burn off. We'll find out, it's certainly steaming away. Okay, this chicken here is gonna cook a lot quicker than the one that's in the barbecue. So I'm gonna turn that down, go back outside, see if there's anything we can do to speed this up. I can hear, hear the sizzling. I don't know if you could hear anything there. It's just a dry old piece of chicken in the barbecue. Not the way I'd normally do it. There'd be like oil and garlic and herbs and all sorts of lovely stuff going on. But this is just cooking away That's really not gonna take long. I'll see you again in a second. I've taken the ones that are in the pan off the heat for a minute. Why do I do this so much? I'm not sure. We'll get to the bottom of it. Okay. Now I've gotta be honest, the chicken that's in the barbecue just tastes like, tastes like, smells like pretty basic chicken right now. Maybe what we should have done is Put a few wood chips in there to really make this a fair test. Um, oh well. It's just occurred to me what this stuff smells like. This um, liquid smoke, I can smell it now quite a lot. Obviously I'm cooking it. But when I was smelling it out of the bottle, there was something that it, uh, <laughs> it was reminding me of. And it's been years since I've had it. So um, that's probably why it took me so long. But if you know McDonald's barbecue sauce, that's exactly what it smells like. That's how they make those commercial barbecue sauce things. So there we go, That's, that is a definite, it smells, it's the spitting image of the smell of McDonald's barbecue sauce. So now maybe we can make barbecue sauce at home that tastes like that. We'll try that in another episode with some chicken nuggets. 
All right, the chicken outside is cooked. I need to grab the board and go and get that. I'm pretty sure this will be cooked. If you saw the last video that was a, like a blog, blog video, you can tell that I'm not, unlike when it comes to steak and lamb and other, other ways of cooking chicken, I'm not so careful when it comes to chicken breast. For me, it's like a food of convenience, really. I just used my hunting knife to test. So you can see that's nice and cooked. Let's get that in. Gonna close the barbecue so we don't lose too much heat. We've got the small piece down there that was done, that was marinated a little bit in the smoke. This is the one that I cooked in the pan, adding it as I went along. And this is the one from the barbecue. Right, let's get our food on. I'll see you in a second. All right, guys, here we are. Oh, I've forgotten the liquid smoke. One sec. And the beer, of course, so uh, here we go. Right. I'm looking for something that can essentially allow me to have a barbecue flavour without having to get the barbecue started, you know? Uh, let's taste the barbecue one, of course, first. It's got a bit of colour on it. I didn't do anything special to it, so it doesn't have any flavour apart from nice chicken, and the slight char grilled smoky flavor from a barbecue. Nothing wrong with that. That'd be great for a chicken burger or a chicken salad. But I'm more intrigued over here, right? Okay, we've got this small piece here, which I put the smoke on, the liquid smoke on, for about three or four minutes before it cooked. It does smell slightly smoky. Well, well, well. I wasn't expecting for it to be at least enjoyable. So I didn't add anything to that during the cooking process. It was all before, just for, as I said, three or four minutes. Maybe there is something to this liquid smoke, surprisingly. All right, here's the one I added it while I was cooking. This smells even smokier. Actually, it doesn't taste as smoky. Obviously, it's much bigger, but it doesn't taste as smoky as, as that one. Bear in mind, this is not just smoke. This is liquid hickory smoke. So it's not, it doesn't taste like burnt or acrid smoke. It tastes like that sweetness. You know the red ring you might get around um, like a pork butt or a brisket or something that's been smoked, barbecue smoked for six, eight, 10, whatever plus hours. That's what it tastes of. So I'm wondering, we need to test it with some pork ribs or something like that so that we know if it can, it's more about mimicking that sort of flavor. As far as using it as like a dipping sauce, you have to really then want that overt barbecue, hickory barbecue flavor, which I quite like. I'm not gonna be putting it on everything. I'm, I'm not gonna put it on really good steak. I am tempted to try it, of course I am. But actually it probably improved this bit of chicken over here. The one that was on the barbecue the ones from the pan that have used this are really juicy. I would say it has improved that. <laughs> there you have it. This liquid smoke, hickory smoke, is all natural. It can help you to mimic that barbecue smoke you get from a like sort of hickory smoked long cooking barbecue scenario. So I think we need to come back soon, test it with some ribs first, see what it's like. Maybe we'll then do a pork butt and even a brisket where we don't cook some of it outdoors. We cook it indoors in the oven, test it out. Is this sacrilege? Is this ridiculous? Is it unnecessary? Would you ever have it? I don't know, you tell me, but 
I'll put a link down there. And uh, that's the end of today's vlog. I hope it wasn't too mad and that you've taken something from it, which is that you can make pretty bulk standard chicken breast indoors in a pan, tastes like it's been cooked over hickory smoke, and it's a pretty passable way of doing it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw today, please subscribe. Go and watch some of our other videos. Give this one a like, comment down below. I'll see you soon. Cheers.